focused uh, on, on a theory of cyberbullying. First of all, sorry for my language, but I'm not a native speaker. My, my native language is uh, Czech. But I try to, to describe everything you need to understand and uh, you will have all on the slides. So I think that you will understand every, everything uh, from theory because this part of presentation will be focused on the uh, theory of uh, cyberbullying. First of all, uh, cyberbullying refers to, to dangerous communication phenomena uh, through information and communication technology such as internet and mobile phones that uh, results in harm to the victim. So it's important to say that the cyberbullying uh, results in harm. There's a harm to victim and uh, such harm uh, can be the intent of uh, the attacker or could be also caused by mistake. For example, bad joke. Uh, children will do bad jokes in, at, at school uh, and they will prepare or record some content, some video or uh, photos which are shared through internet. So uh, the problem could be misunderstanding uh, between the victim and the attacker and there are other, other motives we will speak uh, about in the next part of this presentation. What's important to say, the victim is assaulted uh, repeatedly, either by the original attacker or uh, by those who are involved uh, in the cyberbullying later. So uh, there, is, uh, there is a partition of the process, there is sharing, there is commenting and other, other uh, forms uh, of actions uh, in, uh, online, uh, especially at, uh, at social networks or YouTube and other platforms. Uh, it's necessary to, uh, to distinguish between uh, one of aggression, uh, so-called cyber uh, aggression or cyber harassment and uh, cyber bullying. Uh, those are two uh, different phenomena. Uh, one of cyber aggression or cyber harassment, it's, it's a one of attack, uh, it, it dies down quickly and it's finished quickly and it has little impact uh, uh, on, on the victim, especially in area of uh, emotions. But if we look on the cyberbullying, it's uh, repetitive, it's intense, uh, the victim perceives it as, as a hurtful, uh, it, it dies down slower and it has impact uh, not just on emotions but also on uh, physiology, behavior, uh, bad, bad sleeping, uh, stomach age, uh, stomach age uh, so much and other problems uh, which are which are connecting with psychosomatics. So uh, let's try first exercise and uh, we will try to find what is cyberbullying uh, and what, what is not. Uh, we have four situation and uh, we have to to find uh, what what is cyberbullying and what is just one time aggression or, or something else uh, but not uh, cyberbullying. First one, your friend will send you an ugly SMS message in which uh, he will hurt you, but uh, then he will never do it. So uh, we see that it's just a SMS message, nothing else. Uh, so is it cyberbullying or not? No, it's not a cyberbullying. Uh, it, it, there is not a process of big impact. Uh, with, uh, there is no repetition. It's just uh, one of attack. It, 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 it doesn't uh, cyberbullying. The second one. Someone will shoot you with a mobile phone and uh, then adjust the photo to make you ridicule. Uh, then he or she will send it to classmates. So there is sharing, there is sending. It's not just uh, one of attack. So it's cyberbullying. The third, uh, someone will create a false profile of you on Facebook and offend, slander and attack uh, other internet users. Is it or not? It is. It is cyberbullying because we see that there is uh, some identity theft. We are working with false profiles. Uh, we, we are uh, sharing and disseminating uh, a, a lot of false information about someone. So this is cyberbullying. Uh, another one. Someone uh, wrote to you on your wall on Facebook that he didn't like you. He didn't use curses, no bad language, but just just uh, there is uh, written that uh, he doesn't like uh, doesn't like you. Is it or not? 
it's not we see that there is no aggression, it is just uh, normal language, uh, not, nothing else and it could be a kind of, uh, I don't know, evaluation or just just uh, comments, uh, my feelings, but it's, it's not, uh, not cyberbullying. And the last one, uh, your friend uh, offended you at school, so you decided to take revenge. You uh, secretly photographed him in school and uh, started to spread this photo to the internet with uh, accompanying comments that uh, he is a chief. Is it or not? It is. So at, at, the, at the last of this exercise it's necessary to say that we have to remember that cyberbullying is uh, repetitive, intense and hurtful. Now uh, let's say something about attackers. So what we know about attackers, who is the attacker? Uh, maybe we need to know something about motives. If there are some, some really important motives, why the people attack another people in online world? So the first, uh, first uh, uh, proclamation, uh, the most attackers are classmates of victim, former friends, friends or pupils from another school or class. Uh, there are really a lot of studies focused on, on cyberbullying, but the findings are similar. Uh, in the most situations or incidents, the attackers were really uh, another children. No strangers, no anonymous adult people, just uh, classmates of victim, uh, friends of victim. Um, um, in the most cases, there was no, no, not impact of, uh, for example, adult people. In the normal types or the most frequent types of cyberbullying, we are not speaking about cyber cyber grooming or child child grooming, about extortion, but uh, about the most frequent form form uh, of uh, cyberbullying. And another sentence, uh, the attackers are both boys and girls in a similar proportion. In about 20% uh, of cases, victim doesn't find out who the attacker was, but uh, uh, in the last, uh, in the last uh, percents uh, we see that really uh, the, the proportion of boys and girls is, is really similar. And now it's time to look on, on the motivation for cyberbullying. Uh, there are a lot of motives. Uh, uh, there is a list of, of the most frequent uh, mo motives. The first one is revenge. Uh, cyberbullies believe that the victim deserves it. Uh, cyberbullies are bored. Uh, cyberbullies are under peer pressure. Cyberbullies think uh, everyone is doing it and it's normal. Cyberbullies are power hungry or cyberbullies believe uh, they uh, won't be caught. Uh, cyberbullies like uh, empathy. So we see that there, there, are there are really a lot of motives uh, for cyberbullying. So uh, we try to look on the, on the um, most frequent um, motives for cyberbullying. The first one is revenge. Uh, maybe you know uh, the movies uh, like uh, Kill Bill or, or John Wick. Uh, the main motive of, of this movie is, is revenge for, for something. When, when kids uh, uh, have been bullied, they often uh, seek revenge instead of coping with the situation. Uh, so the motivation for these victims of bullying is to uh, retaliate for the pain uh, they have experienced. Uh, when this happens, uh, these kids are often referred to as bully victim. Uh, they were victims, for example, of traditional forms of bullying. Uh, and in a, in a cyberspace, uh, in an online, sp uh, online space, on, on Facebook, on, on a Snapchat, on, on a Instagram or on TikTok, uh, they switched uh, their roles and uh, they, they are bullies. So it's important for teachers or parents to find out uh, the real motive uh, in, in a context because the motive could be just a revenge for a, a really situation where the attacker was bullied before uh, by uh, some, some group of, of, uh, of children at school, for example. So revenge is a really popular motive for cyberbullying. The second one is the motive, cyber bullies believe the victim deserves it. Bullying often revolves around a person's social statute at school. And some kids will cyber bully others based on the school's perceived social ladder. For example, 
uh, one girl may cyber bully another girl uh, because she believes uh, she stole her boyfriend. N or another example, mean girl may cyber bully a girl uh, who excels uh, academically because she is uh, jealous uh, about her success. Consequently, they usually do not feel remorse or guilt for cyberbullying uh, because they believe the victim uh, deserves it. Yeah? And uh, the third one, cyberbullies are bored. Uh, it's, it's necessary to, to understand that uh, kids uh, who are bored and uh, looking for entertainment uh, will sometimes resort uh, to cyberbullying to uh, add some excitement and drama to their lives. They also may choose to cyberbully because they uh, lack attention or uh, and uh, supervision from from parents. So these three motives are the most frequent motives for cyberbullying from point of view of, of uh, attackers or offenders or, uh, from from the point of view uh, the the people who want to abuse or to attack uh, to another people in in this form of, of uh, aggression. Yeah, we, we see a bored, bored uh, boy. Now it's time uh, to describe or say something about the most frequent uh, forms of cyberbullying. Um, the first, what we uh, have to say is that there are direct uh, and indirect uh, forms of cyberbullying. Uh, and uh, we see on the page that there are at least uh, six to ten uh, main uh, forms of uh, cyberbullying. Uh, and uh, the first one is humiliation and denigration. We call it verbal attacks. Many, many verbal, verbal attacks uh, in online uh, environment. Uh, next are threat and intimidation, uh, publishing, humiliating, recordings of photos, impersonation, identity theft, trapping, uh, outing somebody's secret in order to harm them, uh, blackmailing, extortion, extortion. Flaming, uh, bashing, cyber stalking, exclusion from the virtual community, web controlling, uh, harassment, a confession phenomenon. We will speak about this phenomenon in a case studies part of, of this course. Insulting, humiliating, and mocking groups, and other and other forms of uh, cyber bullying. Uh, if we look on the Europe and the European Union, uh, we see that there are many r researches which are focusing on cyberbullying and bullying uh, in online environment. Uh, there are national studies, there are also international studies, for example, EU Kids Online. But uh, if we look on the results or outputs uh, from these researches, we see different, different numbers of uh, cyberbullying prevalence. For example, if we look on the research of uh, uh, UNN and Gross from the USA, uh, there is prevalence in this study about uh, 72%. Uh, but if we look, for example, on the researches uh, from Sonia Livingstone, EU Kids Online, uh, or maybe on the researches from Germany and other countries, we see different numbers. For example, if you if you look on the Europe, uh, the average uh, European Union uh, prevalence of cyberbullying is about six to ten percent. Uh, so the, the numbers are really not so big. And if we look on the last research, uh, EU Kids Online, to, to, uh, 2020, uh, there is a graph. Uh, it's in Czech, but I will translate it for you. Uh, if you look uh, on on the graph, it's a graph of prevalence of cyberbullying and the. the the light, light red color, it's a cyberbullying where the victim was uh, attacked uh, at least one per month, one pen per month. So every month, uh, repeatedly, the cyberbullying is in a process uh, and the children reported that they were cyberbullied. And if we look uh, on, on the dark red, darker red color, uh, it's, uh, it's an, a number uh, sometimes per year. So if you look on the numbers, for example, about Poland, on Romania, Malta, Serbia, Estonia, Switzerland, Spain, Czech Republic, uh, we see the numbers are not so big. Uh, for example, in the Czech Republic, the number of prevalence of cyberbullying is about 6 percent. So it's important to different uh, between cyberbullying and the cyber aggression, classical normal aggression, uh, which is everywhere on the internet. 
Uh, many researchers are working with, with numbers of cyberbullying or cyber aggression. And if you look on the Czech Republic, uh, we have uh, this number 40, 41%. 41% of Czech children was met with one of uh, the manifestations uh, of cyberbullying. So uh, they ha uh, have experience. It doesn't mean that uh, they were victims of cyberbullying. Uh, so this is the reason why the number is so big because it's just experience with a form with aggression but uh, it's not a real a real cyberbullying in the 2019 uh, we made a research uh, check children in cyberspace and we uh, looked on the forms or the most frequented forms of cyberbullying uh, which are in the Czech Republic and these uh, color bars uh, are outputs or findings uh, from this research and if you look on the bars we see that uh, uh, 27% of our respondents, the respondents were children from uh, 8 to 17 years. Uh, so 27% uh, uh, 27 of uh, children ha have uh, experience uh, with, with uh, verbally attacks, with harm harming uh, ver verbally through the internet. For example, with humiliation, with, with uh, verbal offending, with uh, ridiculation, with other, other forms of uh, verbal attacks. And another bar, 12% uh, children uh, has the experience that someone accessed, uh, uh, for example, his online accounts uh, 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 and uh, it was without permission. So. Uh, it's it's a kind of uh, of uh, hacking, for example, uh, to Facebook, to to account, to mail, to some some account which the children has on the internet online. Twelve percent also told that uh, someone disseminated through the internet or mobile phone a photo intended to humiliate the, the child. Uh, uh, Nine percent told that someone. Uh, Threatened, uh, uh, threatened the child or intima intimidated child through the internet. Uh, Six percent told that uh, uh, someone registered a fake social network profile, and other and other forms, as you see on this slide. So the most frequent form and the traditional form of cyberbullying is really is really verbal form, verbal attack, humiliation, offending with with verbal verbal uh, tools. But uh, uh, the uh, most dangerous forms uh, are not so frequent. Uh, 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 for example, if we speak about blackmailing or sextortion in the Czech population, we can say that about five to six percent of children. Uh, have uh, experience with this form, with blackmailing, for example, with using of, of uh, nude photo or some, some type of uh, child pornograph pornography. Maybe uh, we need to answer the question if uh, cyberbullying is a crime. If we look inside the criminal code uh, in the most countries, including the Czech Republic, uh, there is uh, no special crime with name cyberbullying. Uh, the most common forms of cyberbullying uh, are not criminal offenses, are not criminal offenses, but many forms of cyberbullying fall under other illegal categories, uh, such as harassment, especially if it, it uh, uh, has a basis in a, in a gender or race, threats, stalking, extortion, uh, underage sexting or sexual extortion, uh, these are, are really crime, uh, so we, we need to say that the word cyberbullying is not in a codex of law in the Czech Republic, but, but uh, uh, if you look on the forms, uh, many forms of cyberbullying could be, could be um, classified uh, as, a, as a crime. That's all from theory and uh, now it's a time for cases, for samples, for examples. Thank you for attention.